for five all. Even Isovic temporarily to pieces. But his uh, serve can soon put him back on track, of course. It is extraordinary. Caught a look, dead and buried, frankly, at 1 4, love 40. And now he's got a great chance of winning, indeed, uh, unless Ivan Isovic does get his uh, brain in gear again and his game. You've got to say that Caught is going to win this match. Five all, final set. It will be a tie break if it goes to six all, of course. Suddenly, a bit of despair. He pulled his serving together at Wimbledon. Prior to that, really, his second serve had uh, gone to the dogs. Oh, dear me. Holy smoke. Oh. <laughs> and even as a bit special comes back with interest. 100, 116 miles of left-handed swing. And Court is suddenly inspired. Now that's what, eight points in a row? Plus. Well played, Ivan Isovic. This quarter threw everything into that service return. Not the greatest of volleys, but a good low volley, and then uh, just lifted a bit by quarter. And now, of course, he wants the same ball, if he can possibly get his hands on it. Sensational point, and Peter Corder breaks, and now he'll serve for the match. Magical stuff.
Well, even Isovich must wonder what on earth's going on out there, but what a point. Well, I'm sure both of them saw their whole tennis careers uh, played out in front of them during the course of this rally. I started counting at one stage, 34 strokes, I made it. And, uh, of course, the point was that Corda actually held back initially until he'd won the point, and then he let all hell break loose. Wonderful. Even Isovic, generally in those situations, is uh, a very clever character because he can just steer the ball back. He likes that uh, slice backhand and uh, loves to test himself with long rallies. And what I so much liked about it was the fact that Corda was much more restrained than he usually is. Normally he likes firing very early off in a, ra in a rally, and yet he, he played along with Ivan Isovic. And it was more likely Corda who was going to uh, take the ultimate risk, and it was either going to be a winner or a loser. Well, Goran Ivanisovic at one stage leading 4-1 and love 40 on the quarter serve in this set. He's had match point, but now it's quarter who's serving for the match. Porter's got a bit of a, a string going, and uh, even Isovich, of course, has got a, a mental string that I think is gone, and I think part of it was uh, too much discussion with the umpire. Oh, and Porter's done his knee! Well, I think we'll find that as he hit that smash, the racket came through and collected his knee. It, we've all done that, and uh, sometimes you hit the funny bone, and of course we know it's not funny. <laughs> Got the line judge as well. Ooh. It's very painful. Course have given him two match points. Oh, and what a way to finish it off! Peter Corder back from the dead, frankly, in that set. One for Love 40, all over. Thank you very much. Oh, no, it wasn't. Corder comes back. Saves match point in the process and wins it. 5 7, 6 4, 7 5 to reach the quarters. And he's giving us a quarter jig, if only a mini jig. Yes, I don't think he can jig much more because I think his uh, knees are his legs hurting a bit too much. But it was a, a Lazarus effort, really, by quarter with a little bit of help from uh, a ragged, temperamentally ragged Ivan Isovic. But perhaps it's the inspiration that uh, we need for Corder because he really hasn't reproduced anything like the Australian form up until the last few points of this match against Ivan Eastwood. Let's hope he can keep it up. So he's through to the quarters. We will have live coverage of two quarterfinals for you. Liked. But each time he's kept the ball low and yet uh, Raft has made good backhand volleys. Well, 
Well, he delayed his attack, but uh, then played a real skimmer here, almost as if the ball was tripping its way across the water. And that wasn't the stone, that was the arrow, or the bullet, straight as a die. And he had to do a bit of contortion of the body here, Corda. It wasn't all straightforward, you see, he was jammed a little bit. And did well to hold himself together. Set point for Rafter. Set of high quality, 42 minutes decided by one break of serve. Yes, and certainly not the sort of play we would have seen had Ivanisevic been out here instead of Korda. And really, frankly, he should have been two breaks up on Korda. And yet only two aces in the match so far, one each. Yeah, that's his problem. He hasn't been doing enough of those, has he? Steve Ulrich being asked something by Pat Rafter, I'm not sure what. Should be wearing the Australian clothing. Kangaroo on the breast. Well, it caught us having a long look at that and a long think. And was that really in? Let's have a look. Outside edge, if anything. Yes, yeah, call for the third umpire. Yes. And even he would be in doubt, I think. Well, I suppose in cricket, when you're in doubt, it's not out. So it should be therefore be in. Well, he's won the last three games, Rafter, and here's a chance to really get this match by the scruff of the neck. Ooh, really a gift 
shifted those last two points. Corder may be thinking about that call. And Patrick Rafter moves a break ahead right at the start of the second set. But let's look back on the highlights of the first with Frew McMillan. Well, there was some terrific all-round play. Not as much net play as uh, from Rafter as uh, we had expected. Corder having to take the net from him. And uh, precisely perhaps because of that, that Rafter didn't come in as often in those flat shots. And, of course, Corder's got the game. He can uh, slice as well. And Rafter using his skill to bring Corder in, give himself a target so that he can then pass. And Rafter mixing his serves up a lot, showing really a lot of his Toronto form behind some very, very solid volleying, particularly on the backhand side, not to mention one of the half volleys there, one of the shots of the first set. And that was when he got the vital break. And these the first set statistics. So again, Rafter well above his average in terms of first serve percentage, and that's so crucial against a man like Corder who can take advantage of second serves. And just a few unforced errors. A few fewer unforced errors from Rafter. And now, of course, with the break right at the start of the second set, things looking really good for Patrick Rafter, who's seeking his eighth successive win having won in Toronto last week and uh, as he looks forward to defending his US Open title he will be in a really buoyant mood Patrick Rafter Rafter a set up and a game up and serving Change of gear for uh, Corder, headgear that is. He also needs to step it up a gear or two. I really don't want Rafter getting too far ahead, although it has to be said that uh, Corder was down and out yesterday against Ivan Isovic in the third set. Just to his right, our left is well, Rafter suddenly uh, racing away with this. Just a, a nod of agreement with the linesman. The quarter camp in the middle there is Thomas Petra, Peter's coach, and on his left, our right as we look at it, the fitness coach. Mark Vesticek. I don't know who's munching away at the apple, but it looks very tasty. You had a lovely, lovely apple just before we came on air.
a slight mishit there from Rafter. It was uh, almost more grunt and sound than uh, than shot itself, but it may have affected Corder. He may have thought it was coming a bit faster than it did. Well, this really is uh, curtains uh, for Peter Corder, you feel, if he were to lose this next point. But, uh, of course, at one stage he was 1-4, love 40 down in the final set against Ivanisevic, so we shouldn't write him off just yet. Use the full width of the court on that second serve he needed to. Well, he's certainly wasting a bit of energy with net cords, and I think it's getting to him a bit, muttering away. There, not often you see Corder miss hit to that extent. Uh, did the racket slip in his hand? making the sake of just not making court of volley trying to be ultra physical there court against even Isovich saved 10 of 13 break points on his serve and that's a key game for Corda because uh, two breaks down against Rafter, I wouldn't have fancied his chances. Staves off the break points and he's still in the match, but Rafter leads by a set and a break, 2-1. Who won the Tour de France? For the 1998 Tour de France, Eurosport is giving away lots of presents, mountain bikes, plus superb Eurosport key rings and caps. Let yourself go. Call now. And good luck. This Saturday, the posse rides to Aachen in Germany, followed by crowds of up to 80,000 spectators. It's not just the horses who are champing at the bit. The Licher Prize, this Saturday, 1800 CET, 5 UK on Eurosport. With Rico. Peter Corder in trouble, a set and a breakdown, but uh, he's capable of coming back from there. He's reached the quarterfinals here for only the second time. Let's uh, see how he did it. After a bye in the first round, he took on the South African qualifier, Marcus Ondruska. No problems there for Corder. Threw in two straight sets, two and three. Mm much harder though against Gora and Ivanisevic. Korda dropped the first set 7-5, won the second 6-4 he was 1-4 and love 40 down, he was match point down but he came back to win it 7-5 in the third great effort and I suppose through well, those are the memories he should have now saying I was in dead trouble last match I came back and won and no reason I can't do it again that's exactly right This part of Corda's problem since winning the Australian, and it may well have been rafters after the US Open, is uh, that they weren't quite able to recapture the the appetite, the hunger, 
almost as if he had done so much in doing it that he's taken all this time quarter to get back. And so at a stage like this, set and one, two down against a, a rampant rafter, really. Ordinarily, I wouldn't give quarter much chance now. There's a nice ring to it, doesn't it? A rampant rafter. A rampant rafter ran around the ragged rocks. Just jagging the bottom edge of the racket under the volley and uh, caught a way offline. Oh. Well, even the best can lose concentration and miss the sitter. And it's a volley he's been playing particularly aggressively. Last year, he was certainly playing it a lot, but not uh, quite as hard as he's been doing. And there, as you say, I think just taking his mind off the point. Well, didn't he learn quickly from his mistakes? It was virtually the same volley, and this time it's uh, far more punishing. and kept the concentration for the easy put away. showing us the full range of his volleying skills now. Yes, and Quarter's face taking an, an almost uh, a scary look as uh, Rafter plays this sort of tennis. Quarter's first double fault of the match. Maybe he was uh, noticing the hour mark. And uh, people trying to keep themselves nice and cool. Yes, trying to keep themselves nice and cool and probably pretending they're uh, sort of rafter with these volleying skills, you know, and doing a, a forehand wave and a backhand wave with those little light fans of theirs. We can but dream. There we go. She's just played one. Our excellent backup staff, production staff, have provided everything apart from someone to come and fan you and I. <laughs> ah, it's even a Mercedes Super 9 fan, I see.
Well, we're off to nose, he's onto something here. It's a little untidy from Corder. The tidiest thing about him are his shoes. I've never seen uh, for a long time a pair of virtually clean white shoes. Yes, pristine white, the quarter shoes, in total contrast to Magnus Larsen in the first quarterfinal, who was in psychedelic yellow. Well, people sometimes ask me, you know, where can they come across some Stan Smith shoes, because they used to be solid white. Well, here you are, ask quarter where he gets his. I used to play with Stan Smith shoes for many years, playing on the junior tour. was his nickname, Stan, the Le Leaning Tower of Pasadena, wasn't it? I didn't hear that one. It certainly came from Pasadena. And that great win over Eddie Nastasi in the uh, Wimbledon final of 72, I think. The last one in which they didn't have chairs to sit on. Not only that, she caught it in her purse. <laughs> but what does she do? I don't think she's got a pitching arm to get it back to the court. Well, of course, in baseball, they can keep the ball. She's uh, thinking about it. She's hoping they'll forget all about it. Corder's staying in touch, but only just. He's clinging on to Rafter's coattails. The Australian lead by a set and 3-2. Of the quarterfinals, let's see how the first of the quarterfinals today finished. It was an all-Swedish encounter. And Thomas Johansson had dropped the first set, 6-4, to Magnus Larsen. And Larsen wrapped it up by taking a second set tie-break by seven points to two. Magnus Larsen through. The first man into the semis. And he awaits the winner of tonight's match between Pete Sampras and Vince Spadia, which we'll be showing you tomorrow evening, six o'clock UK time, seven Central European time. And if it's Sampras and uh, Larsen, Larsen always wins through. Yes, he certainly has a good record against Sampras. And, uh... You feel up for it. He came from a set down against Jonas Bjorkman, so he's beaten a couple of Swedes uh, this week. Now then, that ball that went into the crowd, this is what happened as the lady tried to throw it back. Oh dear! <laughs> Landed in the some of the sponsors' courtside seats. I hope he didn't do too much damage. <laughs> Rafter serving at 3-2. I don't think she's going to make it to the Cincinnati Reds somehow. No, although there'd be a few comments about, you know, some of them are pitching a little bit like her this year. God has got something in his eye, poor fellow. Probably just uh, an eyelash or something like that. Rafter's uh, taking a little break. But he's perfecting his ball skills, I see. It's a pity he can't relax. He's right underneath our little go cam there. I wonder if we can get a close up of Patrick Grafton. There we are. Coming out to serve 3 2, second set.
That's uh, terrific point from both of them. Well, it's a point that really should have been a lot shorter than it was because how on earth Rafter got to that? He's relaxed sitting on the linesman's chair one minute and then flying through the air like a trapeze artist the next. I guess if you're one of so many children, you learn to uh, fight and scramble and dive about. Yeah, Rafter, the third youngest of nine kids. But coming from Mount Isa, which is very much in the outback of Queensland, I suppose there wasn't too much else to do. by quarter then. Rafter for a moment was walking to the chair thinking he'd held serve. In fact, he's just gone for his stringling as the return heads to the line. It'll be pointless him walking to the chair because it'd be 3 all or 4-2 to Rafter, so he wouldn't be changing ends. But uh, I thought I got enough of the line. But I've seen players do that, <laughs> just make the move as if to <laughs> encourage the umpire to make the call. Just a third double. And Corder has the second break point of the match. He certainly had the chance after coming inside the volley, not hitting it quite as pacely and uh, caught his reaction. He'd gone for the, the killer blow straight at Rafter, top of the net. down but certainly not out well it's a good I thought saving volley by Rafter but uh, just look at this and that's about as fast as you can hit a ball this is an Australian open forehand
Kudas right back in it. He breaks the rafter serve for the first time. It's 3 all. Well, if you've just played one wonderful shot virtually like that, why not try another? And Rafter, I suppose, paying the penalty for missing the first serve just a bit too often at the end of that game. Cordes had two of his own, so... Football skills from Peter Corder. his tongue he knows he was close but that's caught him goes for it well it's magnificent play now by quarter because uh, the forehand's in full swing isn't it full flight just can't miss on it and it's the shot which uh, of the two can be a little little more ragged What's so appealing about this match is the rich variety of stroke play. We've seen the wonderful athleticism on the volley and also some uh, fine ground stroke uh, rallies. I think he'd want to encapsulate uh, these last couple of games in terms of his forehand. It's just magnificent stroke play. It always seems that much uh, more s sweet too from a left-hander somehow. Quarter's coming on strong. He's turned this second set around. Rafter did lead 3-1. But now it's Corder who leads by four games to three. We're back on sir. Let's now show you the way the second of the quarterfinals ended. Yevgeny Kavelnikov was up against his doubles partner, Daniel Vacek. 6-4. Kavelnikov won the first set, and he took the second by the same margin. So Kavelnikov awaits the winner.